If you ever implemented a rather complex IC with many functions like telling you the exact date and time, expanding your IO outputs with 16 12-bit PWM pins or receiving your favorite FM radio station in your project, then you might be familiar with I2C, also known as two-wire interface. It is a popular communication protocol that allows one or more master devices, in this case an Arduino Nano, to talk to up to 112 slave devices, to either tell them what to do or to receive data from them which they acquired. So in this video I will tell you the basics of the synchronous serial bus and present you a practical example with an Arduino and a TEA5767 FM radio IC. Let's get started. Before connecting the IC to the master device, I first had to create a small breakout board. For that, I simply scored and snapped the strip board, soldered 5 pin mail header onto its short sides, interrupted the copper traces in the middle, fixed the IC on the board with hot glue and finally connected the mail header with the pins through silvered copper wire. Then I connected ground, 5 volts, the antenna and the audio output to my headphones according to my small schematic. The two I2C pins SDA aka Serial Data connects to pin A4 of the Arduino and SCL aka Serial Clock connects to pin A5. The last remaining components are two 10 kilo ohm resistors, which act as a pull up resistor for the two I2C lines. This is necessary because the devices have an open collector configuration, which means they can only connect the clock and signal line to ground. But since we need two stable voltage states to define the two binary states of a bit, the resistors pull the lines up to 5 volts. After powering up the circuits, it was obvious that the audio output would deliver nothing useful, because the correct code is still missing. The most important resource of information when it comes to I2C devices, or generally every IC, is the datasheet. There we can find what kind of bits or high-low states we have to send in order to tune in a certain frequency, mute the audio or choose the correct region, so it's definitely a good idea to print out those pages. Firstly we need to send a start condition, which means the serial data folds while the clock stays high. But don't worry, the wire library of the Arduino does this automatically when a transmission begins. Then we need to send the address, which is usually a fixed 7-bit value which is always mentioned in the datasheet. Afterwards follows the RW bits, which is 0 if you want to write to the slave or 1 if you want to read from the slave. Once again, the library handles this on its own depending on whether you choose begin transmission or request from. An acknowledge bit is the next, which is sent out by the slave to let the master know that it is ready for the next byte aka 8 bits of data. And here starts the fun part, since we need to send our 5 data bytes which actually tell the slave what to do. It is pretty easy to choose most of the bits correctly by studying the datasheet. But the first and second bytes are a bit special. There we need to define the PLL value, which directly defines the frequency we want to tune in according to this given formula. As an example, I will use 95.6 MHz and get a decimal value of 11697 after the calculation. This can be converted to binary with an online calculator or by hand. But we could also compress it into a hexadecimal value which is more common than writing a long binary code. Again, an online calculator or a small hands-on calculation delivers us the necessary value we need for byte 1 and 2. And while I was at it, I also converted the rest of the binary values into hexadecimal by simply following a chart which represents their relation to each other. Now that we got all our bits, I typed them into my sketch and finalized this data transmission with a stop bit, which pulls the data high while the clock is high. After uploading the sketch, I was capable of listening to a radio station, but since it was rather quiet, I hooked up an amplifier with a speaker in order to hear it clearly. And as you might already have noticed, it works just as expected. It is also a good exercise to use an oscilloscope in order to decipher the different bit states. 
One data bit is only valid when its state is constant high or low over the complete period of the clock pulse, which has a frequency of 100 kHz and is provided by the master. After I was sure that I recorded the exact byte series I entered into the Arduino IDE, I began to write an I2C read function. All the same theory applies as well, except for the acknowledged bits which the master generates this time. By storing the received data in a buffer and doing some evaluation of the first and second bytes, I can easily output the tuned FM station through the serial monitor. And of course, you can add more slave devices to your bus and control all of them with the same theory as before. As you can see, using I2C is not difficult as long as you study the datasheet carefully. But don't think this is the only communication protocol. There's also SPI, one wire interface and plenty more. But that is a subject for another video. Until then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.